Adam says, three, two, one, take off. He presses the button and it's gone. It just it goes up. And I started yelling, I started screaming, I was so happy. <laughs> this project is possible and we need to do it, right? I knew they could do it. I knew from the hobby world that people were doing similar things, not as ambitious as this, but I knew our students had that kind of ability. And I was really thrilled with the students that chose this to work on it, because I, I knew their abilities. And so I believe they could deliver. I, I didn't realize how well that it would perform as, as quickly as it did once they really started the project. Well, the mission aspect on, these, on this really fires me up. Being able to help people in getting medical supplies from one location to another that would normally take hours, get those over there in 30 minutes. Something that really excites me and really fits in with the mission why I came to Oklahoma Christian, was to work on projects where we can make an impact like that. So the mission of the project was to deliver medical supplies in Honduras. The road infrastructure there is uh, pretty minimal, so it's really difficult to get medicine or, or time-sensitive projects from one location to the other. They asked us basically to design this thing that could fly medicine or deliver products from one location to the other without anyone having to control it. So basically a fully autonomous aircraft. So our goal was to take off from Catacomas and demonstrate that we could fly over these mountains between Catacomas and Colmi. So we designed an aircraft with the intention to take off from Catacomas, fly over the mountains, drop a small one pound payload in Colmi, and return back to Catacomas and land. So that was our design goal. We at OC had never designed anything like this before. And so the design process was pretty difficult. From the ground up, develop Oklahoma Christian's understanding of how to predict power consumption in flight, uh, constant flight between long range because everything Oklahoma Christian had done before was just thrust, maximum power, not efficiency. Then once we had our like our build, our, our airframe, our design, we started to look at options like uh, what flight computer do we need, how do we need to program this thing, what kind of batteries do we need, what kind of propellers, uh, how, how is it going to affect our efficiency if we have a bigger wingspan or a smaller wingspan. From the ground up design this aircraft, we had to determine communication between the ground and the aircraft in flight. All that was decided by us as the students. We had to learn how to operate the equipment, we had to choose the equipment, we had to build it, making sure that it's easy to operate. From the ground up, we built it, and then we ended up being able to take it to Honduras to get our first test flight in Honduras. We arrive in Honduras, and Customs says, hey, you can't take this in. We have to pull all the hardware out of those, out of those crates, tie our wings into the back of a pickup truck. After we've been so careful with them all the time, we're always worried about breaking our wings. And on the way to the clinic in Honduras, I was sitting in the back of this pickup truck with like the fuselage of our drone just sitting in my lap. We were looking at different locations where we wanted to take off from and where we wanted to land. Across from the location where we were staying at, there was this big soccer field. That is the perfect spot to take off from. The only downside was it was across from the police station. There was like a big governor or president in the same town. There were police officers on every corner. And so before we actually tested it, we went into the police station and we asked them, hey, we have this, we have this drone. Is it okay if we fly it? And they were like, sure, let's do it. <laughs> they didn't care. You know, we designed our mission so that we would take off from Catacombs and fly to Colmi and try to land it in a rough area that was just clearly not good enough for landing, right? And at the Colmi site, where we were intending to drop the package originally, we, there's nowhere to land. We thought about it and we decided, no, we are not flying back into Catacombs. And this is another one of those learning lessons of going down there. We'd seen the satellite imagery and said, hey, we can do this. And then we get down there, we're like, nope, nope, we can't. We're flying one way. We're gonna have to take it and get the data. That's all we can do. We can't, we can't actually make it return and safely land it, but we can get our data. So we set up in this park and around us, Hunters started to collect around the edges of the park. And they're like watching us like, what are they getting ready to do? So we set it up in the park Delta and I are watching it, lining it up, doing everything we can to make sure we have it as ready as possible. 
Adam says, three, two, one, take off. He presses the button and it's gone. It just, you hear this high pitch whirring noise. And right before the end of the soccer field, it just goes, it goes up. And I started yelling, I started screaming, I was so happy. <laughs> Then as soon as it's in the air, we're like, all right, we're good, let's go. It looked like we were escaping a crime scene as fast as we were like, all right, let's go, boom, we're off. And we started chasing after the drone, trying to keep it in sight. It was close enough so that we could collect data the whole time. On the other end, in Colmy, we had Dr. McCormick and the juniors who were with us. They were at the other side to collect and see where it crashes. Before too long, we lose signal. Dr. McCormick's like, we started getting a signal. And then like moments after that, he's like, and there's the drone. And it arrived at their site. And it's like circling overhead, getting ready to come in to its crash landing. So it did exactly that. It circled overhead and it went in and did a crash landing in this, this, this hilly area where we made sure there was no houses around. So yeah, that was great. And we flew from one location to the other autonomously. It was really cool. A lot of hard work and a lot of time, but it definitely paid off. So yeah, it was, it was actually genuinely mind-blowing to get to work on this kind of project that has such cool technical aspects and such great humanitarian aspects to it as well. It's not just for the fun of it, you know. We're trying to actually achieve reliable transport of medical supplies in Honduras.